All right, alumni spotlight today, Lenny Trusnick. Uh, Lenny is a 2008 graduate, came in that first recruiting class. As I told Terry Summers the other day, I can't remember who committed first in that first class. It was either you, Terry, Dunnington, maybe Bogner was in there. I'm not sure you know, who was recruit one in our, in our first recruiting class. You were definitely in one of those first couple guys and huge part of our uh, program kind of, uh, I think, building and getting the foundation out of Nordonia High School. Uh, you know, Lenny was a tremendous wrestler. Uh, while recruiting him, we wa you know, watched him wrestle all the way to the state championship game and just had a hell of a career for us uh, as a four-year starter two-year all-conference, uh, you know, player, and then also linebacker of the year, his senior year in the OAC, and uh, several all-region teams and things like that. After graduation, he had uh, played in an all-star game in Virginia that included some Division I players. They were looking at a fullback and a linebacker. And, uh, you know, if I remember correctly, Lenny, you tore it up in that game. And, uh, you know, the Browns took a good look at you after a good workout up at BG and got into, into uh, you know, the rookie mini camp with the Browns before – you know, um, kind of changing gears from football and starting your career after that. But why don't you tell us a little bit of kind of after graduation and kind of what you're up to these days. You know, you're doing great things down in Georgia. So why don't you kind of fill everybody in? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, since since graduation, it's, it's now been 12 years. Um, the first two years I, I spent – um, in Las Vegas, actually, after college, um, wasn't really a hundred percent sure where I was going to take myself career-wise. But uh, but after two years, landed with the company I'm actually still with, uh, Insight Global. Uh, we're a technical services firm, does like workforce solutions around staffing, outsourced services in the technology and engineering space. Um, and I'm a national sales director, uh, overseeing uh, three of our largest customers that we have nationally. Um, Ten years ago, when I started with with Insight Global, it was uh, uh, not really sure where where I would be if it was a stepping stone, but it's really turned into uh, something similar from from Ohio Northern, a family atmosphere, and and kind of always have each other's backs and and hold each other accountable. Um, and it's a it's a fun fun company and, and leverage all the traits I I learned from growing up to high school and college. Um, so I spend most of my time traveling around the country. Um, meeting with with customers uh, across north america um and it's it's been uh it's been a fun ride living in multiple cities i've i lived in scottsdale and then new york city um then fort lauderdale and most recently uh here in atlanta um i moved here about two years ago and uh, just bought a home uh in the buckhead area uh, maybe about five or six months ago it's exciting i mean watching some of your pictures you post and i mean <laughs> you travel all over the place man You're it's uh, been a, it seems like it's yeah. been a lot of fun for you, and I know we got a chance to catch up down there in Florida. I think it was two years ago. I was able when you were still mm -hmm. down there. Maybe, maybe it might have been two and a half. Uh, but anyways, I had a chance to catch up you there, and just always just real proud of you. Continue to see you you being successful. I know those two years you're in Vegas. I would check in periodically, just a little wor worried about you as a young man, <laughs> young guy in Vegas. Uh, but uh, you, you made it through that, and uh, all those people that know you obviously knew that was a good fit for you as, as a 20, probably three-year-old. But uh, you, you're, uh, you've had, a, had a, a, lot of, a lot of great experiences. It's pretty cool. Let, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the recruiting process back in the day. I mean, you were, uh, you were highly sought after, um, you know, excellent two-sport athlete. And talk a little bit about kind of that process, what you remember about it, and how you ended up at ONU. Yeah, I think uh, I think it, it, it kind of the elephant in the room is, is my older brother uh, Jason uh, had already committed and working uh, wor working with you guys um, at Ohio Northern, so that immediately drew out uh, Ohio Northern as as one of the top uh, choices. Um, I, I had this bug in me that wanted to go to Florida and go be on a beach somewhere for for college, um, but as that. I went through. As I went through the process, it was um, if I, I'm a family is huge to me. Um, I, I have a, a, a massive family, as you know that, and, and being close to them it was was a priority. Um, and then I think from a recruiting perspective, you um, took it upon yourself to to not only as the head coach but also linebacker coach um, to make it very clear that that you wanted me playing football there. Um, 
and and taking the time out of your schedule to to come to I think you came to two or three wrestling matches and then uh, my senior year coming to the state tournament um, and spending one or two days there uh, that meant the world to me and, and was so different than any other um, conversations or uh, recruiting that process from a process perspective that I went through that I knew that it was it was meant to be and and uh, and having uh, having my brother there was was easy an easy transition <laughs> for me and then having a football team uh, and a group of guys that you know you're going to have immediate uh, immediate brothers and, and a group of friends um, not to mention when you look at the the um, the education aspect of it and and knowing that you're going to get a world class education while having fun while playing football and, and enjoying yourself uh, I, I couldn't really pass it up well it is uh for those that don't know uh, see uh, jason was finishing up his sophomore year going into his junior year when you were coming mm -hmm. as a freshman so you guys ended up playing together then with jason having the injury for basically almost three years i mean he missed a little bit of that yeah one year but at least two and a i will say two and a half years but that was uh that was fun for us <laughs> you guys uh, lined up right you know kind of close to each other on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, favorite football memories? You know, uh, you made a lot of plays, made a lot of tackles, a lot of fun stuff. What, what kind of stands out there? Well, now, that you, now that you mentioned Jason, uh, one funny memory would be uh, when, when Jason and I got in a scuffle on the field in between <laughs> plays <laughs> and we got a flag thrown on ourselves <laughs> for, 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 I think, a 15-yarder. <laughs> oh, man. And I remember you having to pull us out of the game. Um, but, but I think when I, when I look back at, and people uh, ask me kind of what are the best memories you've had, or I think there's really a couple that stick out for me. Um, Mount Union, as, as you're probably – anyone you talk to that's within a year from me is probably going to have the same mem – a similar memory. But more specifically, the game when we, we beat Mount Union after 110 games, win streak that we snapped uh, the goal line stand going into halftime uh, we're off by, I think a touchdown yeah. uh, there's there's nothing better than that feeling of, of going in with that level of momentum and knowing that um, I don't I don't think we had a question in our mind what, what the outcome of that game was going to be yeah. and so that's probably one of the best memories I have for sure well that play that's for those that don't know the play many many do that'll watch this but uh, first and goal on the one right before the half and to stop them you know, they called a timeout, and a lot of people know you're a good football player, but a lot of people don't know how hard you work to video. And it was a fourth down play, and they put the fullback. It used to sit in my office for an hour before meetings and watching video. They're in Espanito almost, you know, Espo and you almost every day. And uh, you knew what play they're going to run as soon as they line up in that formation. And you absolutely just ran right over that offensive guard and made that tackle with West in the backfield. And what a play that was. And uh, it just, I don't think you get enough credit for how hard you worked at film study. Yeah, I think, I think the preparation component is so critical for, for I, I used to think it was just for football. Now, fast forward yeah. 12 years, uh, preparation for really anything you're doing when it comes to your business, uh, your family, and, and, uh, and, and, and the football side. Um, I think uh, we're going into the second, uh, kind of the second memory that I have is, uh, I think this was 2006. I should know the exact date, but um, my, yes. my grandfather passed away. Yep. And uh, and my brother and I both we we didn't practice that entire week. Um, I remember having a conversation with you. That said, "Go home. Your family comes first, and and we'll figure out the game part." We went home the whole week, and and I remember being home, and my grandma said, "There's no way you're not playing on Saturday. I'll be there. Your grandpa would want to play." I'm like, okay, head coach, me and Jason want to play on Saturday. We don't know the game plan, but we need you to walk us through it. And uh, and it happened to be probably the best game I've ever played, quarter. I mean, start to finish, um, which resulted in in winning the the MVP of the game award that they give out for the Shriner uh, the Shriners game, um, the the home game they have BW every year. And uh, and I think we we just it, the best game that I possibly could have had defensively um, in, in yeah. that game. No doubt. So that, that was a memory that sticks out for sure. That's, that's a special one for sure. And what a great family you have. I mean, Grandma Trustick, she even went with us on our trip to Germany. And obviously your dad. I mean, yeah. you know, your dad is, you know, I can remember many, uh, you know, memories with him. But I, I can remember one of my favorite with your dad is after you're done playing probably 
two or three years later, maybe maybe more like four or five years later, and all of a sudden he shows up down at Capitol at a game down, down at Capitol, and he runs up like you know behind me as we're leaving the locker room to go to the field. He kind of grabs me on the shoulder, and I mean he, he's he's the best. He's very loyal and loves the game of football. Loved watching you guys play for the Polar Bears, but he continues to stay in touch now. So what what a guy! Absolutely. Even if it means he's in a, on the field during a coin toss taking pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's, he's, he was known for a few uh, – he took a few photos and he wanted to get right up in there. Yeah. I don't – he didn't, he didn't yeah. have a sideline pass. I think he had just like a field pass. Like he would, he would just go wherever he needed to go to get the pictures. It was beyond – I think that's what it was. Whatever's above a sideline pass, he had that. Um, talk a little bit about just, uh, you know, I know you've done a great job of, of – uh, just staying in touch with a lot of your teammates and, you know, staying connected with, uh, the, you know, the, you know, some of your fellow brothers over the time. Why don't you talk a little bit about some of those relationships? Yeah. I, I mean, people like Austin Netsley and, and Zach Ball, Ryan Palfer, um, Terry Summers, uh, talk to Nate Dunnington every once in a while. Um, even Justin Courtney, who's, who's not a player, um, who, who's a mentor of mine and held me accountable in college too. But <laughs> sure. um, I, I, Austin, Austin, Zach, and, and Ryan, I mean, we, we take a yearly trip um, for the last, whatever, 13 years. Um, we say we take a yearly trip, but it's turning into two, maybe three a year I sometimes. Feel like, I feel like there's um, multiple trips. I feel like when I see the, the post, more, it, it's become yeah. Two, yeah, two or three. Yeah, it's definitely grown. So I think just the friendships that we are able to build um, through college, through football, that, that solidified that. Uh, that that bond we have, and and since college, starting to meet each other, or kind of getting more ingrained with each other's families and and friends, and uh, it's it's been incredible. Um, and they're they're brothers for life, and they'll be friends of mine for forever. Um, no question about it.